She is. <laughs> Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. It, it is so yeah, me yeah. too. I was just going to say that, Mr. Yeah, Les, and it's Sarah. such a good energy. Those of you who are joining us via YouTube, we are happy to have you. I'm so sorry that you're not in here with us to feel this beautiful energy and the good vibe that's in here this morning on this beautiful Sabbath morning. So thank you all for being here. We'll open up with a word of prayer. We'll get right into it. Father, we just bless your name and we thank you for your presence here, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit being here among us, oh God. Father, we pray as we study your word that you will open our understanding up, oh God, that you will teach us, that you will illuminate your, your word that we might get your understanding and rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, we bless your name and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. So you guys ready to study? Get into this? Alice, thank you for being here and, and, and joining us at the table. It's always a delight to, to study with you and to, to unpack God's word with you. Um, so thank you for, for being here. God bless. And we want to hear from you all. We have two unused microphones right here, and we will get them to you if you need them or just speak up. Like Sister Lily Jane walked down this aisle and just blessed us. She did not need a microphone. So we, did, we received that blessing that she bestowed upon us this morning. And in her words, it's good for us to be together today. And I agree with that. So we are so excited about that. And again, just jump in. Please chime in if you have a comment or a suggestion. This is part two. Today we're going to be talking about part two of Mission to the Unreached. I don't know about you, but how many of you remember a time, maybe you don't, maybe you've been sanctified all your little lives, but I remember a time <laughs> when somebody would have considered you unreachable, <laughs> you know, or, or we weren't in touch with the Holy Spirit. We weren't, certainly weren't suited up where we are right now, right? Mm -hmm. It was a time in our lives when I'm so glad that somebody reached me, yes. that somebody prayed for me, somebody mm -hmm. bestowed a word over me. I'm so glad mm -hmm. for that. And, and, and now we get, we should be paying that forward, right? Yeah, true, I don't know true. if we do such a good job all the time. Yeah. <laughs> room, definitely room for improvement. I know, right? So this is what this <laughs> lesson takes us through. That. How can we do that better? How can we improve upon our mission, God's mission, and the work that he's called us to, to reach the unreached? Yeah. Um, so we'll get right into it. Alice, do you have any opening comments? Um, it was just interesting that the lesson opened with a statistic about the United Nations. Mm -hmm. I think they said in 2018 the United Nations had published findings that said that 55% of the planet's population lives in urban areas, in city areas, and that, that by 2050, it would be 68%. Isn't that something? Uh, if we should last that long and we're here. Uh, and, and, and it says something interesting that we have no choice but to witness to those in the cities. And uh, mm -hmm. I found that amazing because, you know, in the cities, people just kind of, they don't even make eye contact I with know. you. I they, know. They just be on their mission to, to go where they need to go and just for safety reasons, they don't even make eye contact with you sometimes, especially in the more in the northern cities, maybe than in the southern mm -hmm. cities, but just the same, you know, they're, they're not even wanting to make eye contact. That is so interesting. <laughs> and you know, actually when I read that, that stat, because you're right, that was very interesting that they started, opened up with that. And I thought, you know what, we get a little glimpse of that right here in Wilmington. For those of us who've been here for a while, just look at the downtown area mm -hmm. and how urban that is turning. And, and, and look at, as I was driving down Castle Street, you know, from, what is it, about 8th on down to about 5th and Castle, the newness that's coming, the new, the building, new building right yeah. here across the street, the new urban looking building. So when we look right around in our own community, in our own city, we can see where it is becoming more urban. So you can see, imagine what it's going to look like in 2050 if we yeah. are still here. Yeah. It would be completely urban. And then I thought, well, how are we, because in those urban areas, like you said, people are on the hustle and bustle, they're moving. 
and, and there are a lot of activities happening. There are a lot of things like we have this big Isaiah festival and, all, and it happens on the Sabbath. How, how are we utilizing those platforms or any type of platform to then insert Jesus in that? Like how are we using the stuff that's already available in these urban areas and then doing the work to insert Jesus was just questions that came to my mind. I do want to um, just kind of back up just a little bit in the lesson, um, the memory text. Um, does someone want to read the memory text for us? It's Matthew 15, 28. Yeah, I'm going to read it. Amen. Amen. And you know what, Sister May, that really stuck out to me in that, that scripture passage is let it be to you as you desire. You know, like he's saying, you know, I'm going to do just what you desire for me to do. Mm -hmm. Imagine had she asked him that, but in her heart, she really doubted. In her heart, she really didn't believe he could really do it. And he said that, let it be as you desire. And that thing could have gone a whole different way mm -hmm. if she wasn't believing that he could heal her daughter. And that, that just spoke volumes to me. And I asked my own self the question, what am I desiring? What am I desiring? It just hit different this time yeah. when I read that memory text. And I think too, she did, she had a degree of faith. She believed in who he was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and knew that he could heal her daughter. Absolutely. So she had a degree of faith. And sometimes when we ask things, do we ask it in faith? Mm -hmm. Do we have the faith when we ask? That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. And, and that would stand the reason when we are praying for those um, in the urban areas who, who, who won't give us a time of day, who aren't going to stop and, and sit down and let us witness to them. Are we praying and, and hoping for God to change them and change things in their lives? Or are we just considering them to unreach? Mm. You know, they're rich. They're all about what's going on in their lives. They're all about uh, getting and, and, and growing and, you know, and, and they're on the come up, you know, and I'm saying they, but how many of us that we'll talk about that are inserted in that narrative as well. But are we really praying for people and, and, and with the desire in our hearts for them to be saved? Man, I know I said this before, and I, but this, this lesson, I was so convicted. I'm like, Tracy, are you doing that? You know, like how many people do we come in contact with in the course of a day that we, maybe we work with every single day during the week? Am I really laboring for them? Am I really praying with the desire in my heart that they might be saved? Well, like you, I felt convicted too. And I think we all feel convicted because that is the great commission for us to go out and make disciples. Mm -hmm. But how many are we making? Mm -hmm. How many are we making? Yeah. And we come into contact with people on a daily basis. I mean, it could be your next door neighbor. It could be um, someone on your job. But do we take the opportunity to disciple mm, are we fulfilling good. the great commission and yes i was convicted mm -hmm. that's good did you <laughs> i mean just to reiterate what sister alice just said do we take the time to make disciples of others to to disciple people that because that is labor intensive right yeah there's not a one and done we'll, we'll just have a conversation and it's over discipleship look at how much time jesus spent with the disciples uh, every day yes <laughs> always with them and he wasn't just with them he was always teaching everything was a lesson mm -hmm. who, who in our lives are we doing that for and those are questions yeah. it's a question <laughs> to me it's not an indictment trust me it's not an indictment it's a question for my own self who am i doing that for so let's get it into the lesson so this week we're going to study the Bible story of Christ's mission to, to tire and cite and, and draw, you know, lessons upon our own lives. And I love that the writer says that because um, what has happened, what we're studying about has already happened. Mm -hmm. This is for us, for our lives today. So mission to um, regions beyond. So when we're looking at um, regions be beyond where, right where we are, right in our own homes, this is where we're talking about here. We read that Jesus took his disciples from, um, I'm, I hope I pronounce this right, Gen, Gen, Gennesaret, that's it, Gennesaret. Okay, Gennesaret and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon 
Um, why did he take them from Galilee to these pagan, pagan places? Is the first question. Why, why would he do that? So why is God gonna take us from here, right in our own community, in, in Ephesus, where we know who our Lord and Savior is, where we know we serve the a risen Savior, we know we serve the Son of God, we believe in the, the Trinity, you know, all of that. And it, but he's gonna take us to a place of, and there's places right around here that are gypsies and, and practice all type of things. And he, he'll say, I want you guys to go over there and witness. I want you to be over there. Why would he do that? And why did he do that with the disciples? Why did he take them to that pagan land? Anyone? Well, with Tyre and Sidon, and even with us today, uh, it was a learning lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, he took them there for a learning lesson because these were like Canaanites. Mm -hmm. And the Canaanites were known for idolatry and paganism. Yeah and um, considered basically heathen people. Mm -hmm, I mean, the mm -hmm, Jews would have considered them as, as heathen people. I mean, they had yeah. their temples and their markets and they were rich and they were prosperous. And Jesus wanted to, um, to let them experience that culture because mm -hmm. they were a warring people too. They needed to experience that culture because coming out of Galilee, they weren't used to all right. that urban bustling going on and all this idolatry and paganism. So he introduced them to that so that they would have experience witnessing to those people. So that is perfect. Yeah, That's so it was perfect. for learning and it was the test of faith yes. as well. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Alice capped it all. I don't know if I could add anything to that. Um, that was, that's, that's exactly what he did, right? Um, and, and it says he took them on a field trip. It's like, I love that part, yeah, on a field, field trip. trip. Like, we're, going, we're going in the mission field because we can sit here and talk about this all, all day. And, and that's good, the teaching aspect of it. Now we're going to do the practical part of it. We're going to go out in the field and we're going to practice this. We're going to put this into to real, a real life situation. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. uh, when we look at God, God is continually educating us, right? Mm -hmm. yes. But at the same time, you know, when we got to meet other people, we got to get out there and know how to, uh, act, you know, talk to them. Remember Paul yes. in the city, Antioch, he went in the town square, one of the cities, he went in the town square and just hung out. Just look at people, right? And just start, he was on the beach one Sabbath. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was on the beach one sap witnessing. So what that tells us that we really, this is the educating piece in here as far as right. training. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you go out, that's another type of training. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And the other piece is, if this house is going to be a house for all people, wow, we're going to have to go in some difficult places mm. to bring them to God's house. But Absolutely. we got to go there. Absolutely. They're just not going to come for us not being, you know. That's just, right. They're just not going to come. We got to go. We really got to change our mind, just the way we think. We got to really get out the box. Mm -hmm. Out our comfort zone. That's right. Get out, get out, mm -hmm. out of our right. comfort zone. That's right. Which is that's what right. they had to do. That is and, really and honestly and truly, the people that's out there were once us because the people that we're dealing with, I mean, say people that were the alcoholics, well, the alcoholics are in church. Maybe mm -hmm. they were drug addicted, they're here. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were prostitutes, they're here. The same people that we're supposed to be out bringing in was once us. Amen, amen. Everything amen. is in here. That's yes. Right. Everything is in the house, that's okay? Right. And amen. that's something, and, and one thing the church got to do, we got to reach the LBTG. Mm -hmm. We have put that in our head that it's abomination. But my God, let the stuff that we have done is abomination to God's sight. This house is supposed to be a house for all people. All people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. and, and I, I do want, to, because like Elder Brian is saying, I mean, you know, we have the LBGTQ 
community yeah. that we we absolutely have to embrace because the thing is is that if we because so <laughs> let me see how we have there if we categorize our sin and people grouped us with the sins that we have struggled with then it would be a, a, a acronym over us too if that makes sense mm -hmm. we god who whatever regardless of what somebody struggles with they're still made in the image of god and we are called to serve all people so that's a and perfect god example. loves them right because mm -hmm. that's right because yeah, absolutely <laughs> But how many of us, so we're saying this, and thank God we're in that we understand that, but have we embraced that community real, like for real? And, and if we have, why aren't they here? Um, and then, or, or they're here in secret. And, 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 you know, so again, like Alice said, I mean, am I, a, am I redeemed from that same acronym, but then I'm not going back out and getting a person. So it, there's a great divide between what I say I know God has called me to do and what I'm actually doing because it's not manifested. There's no proof of that. And one thing we have to do, <clears throat> learn how to speak. Everything come to your mind mm. is not Jesus. for you to say. Amen. Mm. Amen. Okay. Mm. Now we say, let, let, let's unpack a little bit more here. Please, we were please. talking about reaching unreachable, right? Because, see, let me back up a minute. The lost corn, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, had to keep sweep, sweeping to find it, yeah. right? So in our own home, there are people that's lost. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. There are people that's lost. But when we talk about, see, there are certain things that we see we can tolerate, mm -hmm. you know, Alcoholics, the drug addict, mm -hmm. we can tolerate that a little bit, right? But when it comes to uh, abortion, women's rights. Speak on it. That's right. Hmm? That's right. We have to learn what is everything come to my mind cannot be said in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. It's sensitive. <laughs> it hurts people. Yeah. Because of all these things that we're talking about, we got it in our families, okay? We got it in our families. And so we really, to reach the unreachable, in here as well out, we got to let the Holy Spirit educate Amen. us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And compassion. And compassion. Because Come Jesus on. Christ had compassion on Come all on. of those people that were Come on. the downcast in society. And we have to have compassion Amen. and be led by the Holy Spirit, like you said, to say the right thing. Mm -hmm. Not or hurt say somebody. nothing at all. Yeah, sometimes it's better to say nothing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Just love. Just listen, listen. We have been educated that <laughs> we have been educated that certain sins is the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But all sin is the worst thing in the world. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, you know, honestly, just this. If we just got that right, that part. Mm -hmm. We would imagine, just imagine what that would do. Not, man, I mean, aside from the, the pews being full, because it would, because people want to be loved, but just imagine what that would do to further the work of Jesus Christ, to further his work here on this earth. If we just learn to love people without disclaimer, without, you know, judgment, just mm -hmm. absolutely love another person. And, 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 and like you said already, I don't, if I'm struggling with that, just remember when somebody loved me, when I absolutely, not when, wow, now I still don't deserve it, you know? Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it blows my mind, and, and, but God is teaching me that. I didn't know this all the time. <laughs> you know, I didn't know this all the time because I, yeah. I, I have to say that. Yeah. You know, I thought you get to a place for real, and you know, and you, and you have to separate yourself so that you don't, be, you don't get caught up. But how in the world can I separate myself from who God has called me to serve? And he generally sends us back to those that we have a commonality with. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, be in the world, but not away. So world. you got to get out there. <clears throat> Absolutely. You got to rub shoulders these people, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're sitting here, I'm, I'm, this, this, we're sitting here, and we get so upset with, with, with 
we have targeted certain groups as the best thing in the world, uh, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The war going on right now, let me kind of, okay? There's one group of the best thing in the world, but at the same time, you're genocizing over here mm -hmm. and you can support that. That's not biblical. That's, right. That's not biblical. Mm -hmm. And we got the, we, we, because we have been programmed, we have been taught the wrong things when it comes to witnessing that mm -hmm. certain people is reachable and that certain people, God is going to just burn them up and annihilate mm -hmm. them and that's not biblical. Mm -hmm. And you know, just what you're saying now, um, last night on the call, um, I, I hadn't had a chance to study, so I was just kind of listening. But, um, and I think you made this point, or it was on the lesson, who owns you? Is that like the first line or something? And who's operating you? Is that it? So um, just that, and, I, and that kind of resonated with me. And, and you, when you just said that, because when, if I get, with, if, like with this political stuff going on, mm -hmm. who, am I allowing that to dictate how I feel and what position I take? Or am I going to the source, which is the word of God? Oh. Amen. You know, amen, what am I doing amen, with that? Because, yeah. I mean, I amen. hear Christian folks in some heated <laughs> debate and argument about the right or the wrong side. And I'm like, but where is, where is the biblical context in that? Because there are pre there's a certain narrative out there. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you catch that narrative, that's the side you're on. Mm -hmm. Who... Who, who, who operating you? That's right. Who that's running right. the show in your mind? Right. right. But we got to go to the word of God. And you telling me that these people don't need nowhere to stay. And mm -hmm. then you say, once I annihilate them, I'm going to be the sheriff over them. Come on. Yep. And this is happening today. <sighs> this is the world we're living in right now. So I, we don't have to look far to see who who has the world determined unreachable. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, mm -hmm. and that's our mission field. That is absolutely our mission field. I'm not doing a good job of that. I don't have to not ask either. you. I'm not, not doing a good job at that. I don't think, I think there's room for improvement for all of us. A lot all for of me, us. Alice. You all pray of for us. me to pray for me too. Pray for me. I mean. And there was what Elder Bryant just said. I was listening to one pastor and could get him back to all this political mm -hmm. environment that we in. Said, are you following the herd or are you following the word? Come on. Because you wow. need to be following the Come word, on. not on, the herd Come just on. because they believe it this way. Come on. But you got to follow good. the word of God. That's good. You got to follow the word of God. That's just good. because you have a mindset that's, well, I'm this party or I'm that party, mm -hmm. but is which one is closest to the word of God? That's right. I love it. I love it. I mean, and these are all areas that, I mean, we could go in so many different directions because of the, this. There are so many different groups that are, are absolutely deemed unreachable. And I, don't, and I didn't even consider the political stuff until you just said that. But as I was reading it and going through this lesson, like, gosh, how many people have, you just kind of segue and just kind of pack them over here. They, they're not going to get better. They're not going to do this. I'm not going to put myself in danger and go over there, right? Jonah's like, I'm not, you want me to yeah. go down there and talk to them, but you ain't going to, you know, as soon as them jokers say I'm done, you going to let them, you going to let them out the hood anyway. You know, like he was like, they don't even deserve that. How, who have I said that about? And if I haven't said it with my words, my actions have spoken that. Because who have I not witnessed to? Who have I given up on? All, like all of that, you know? I'm, I love this lesson. I need to go back and, just, and really, you know, go, take, go through it slower. So I'll speed up a little. Because it's, it's so you much. know, the culture that we're born into, we have different things that are biases and prejudices. Mm -hmm. And we consider certain people groups certain way. So, I mean, that is a lot for us to That's get over point, with yeah. when you've grown up in it and you've heard it all your life. Yes. yes. How do you all of a sudden throw it out and, and, and do something different? I mean, it's got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Because we've been, back that program, see those hellfire sermon, you know, mm -hmm. really messed us up. Those hellfire sermons mm -hmm. were sermons that, you know, you, God is going to annihilate you. Mm -hmm. You going to get messed up. You know, you go out Friday night and dance your hip off. You yeah. know. <laughs> I mean, really. And then, yeah, yeah. and then, 
you are going home, you're afraid <laughs> that God is going to get you. Yeah. Yeah. Hellfire sermon, hellfire yeah. thinking, right? Mm -hmm. We weren't taught love. That's right. Mm. That God is, look, now, Jesus. I have to go back in that message church in the catechism class for years. Where is God? Everywhere. Why does God? God is love. But that became a ritual, right? Mm -hmm. That did not come, become <clears throat> an understanding that when, you know, I won't even go in this line over here because I don't like the way that person look. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, yep. you know, yesterday the guy had to take his calculator and, and give him my change back, right? Because, and he said, I'm sorry, but I pushed the wrong button, so I had to pull out my calculator. Now, I was patient. I didn't say nothing, mm -hmm. you know, but I've been there where I would say, well, my goodness, man, you can't even count. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. No, that's <laughs> right. Cool. Yeah. Right. The man was honest, man, so I pushed the wrong button on the system. And he won't tell me what change I need to give you, mm -hmm. so I need to use my calculator. At least you were trying to give me my right change. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. But because I'm so caught up in myself, I could have been very negative, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Yeah. So and it's that's a, a good, and that messes up our witness mm -hmm. when we do that. Mm -hmm. It completely messes up our witness with that person or with maybe somebody's listening in to that, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have to be very conscious of that. I do want to read this last paragraph on, I don't think we move much further, but um, many challenges <laughs> face the Adventist urban missionary. Among them include health and environmental concerns. Others would include, and this is very important, the high living costs, like if, if we were, God called us to be in an urban area to witness the high living costs, racism, bigotry, nationalism, and constraints on religious freedom and expression. Nevertheless, despite these obstacles, we must work for the cities. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. We would think that, I know God's not calling me to go down there and those people so racist and all that bigotry and all that stuff I got to deal with. Surely he don't want me in an environment like that. Like I can hear myself saying that. But that would be, that's exactly where he wants me and not to get upset and frustrated. You know, because people gonna do me wrong or say wrong things, or maybe he, because I'm a black woman and it's a, a white or Asian man, they gonna want to give me my wrong change and I don't want to correct it. You know, whatever, but this is, that's right, that's right. How you even know if it's the right change? I mean, that's real. And, but that's, exa what about that being exactly where God is calling me to serve? Wow. I was like, Jesus, really? You know, <laughs> I'm comfortable in the rural area, you know, so maybe that ain't where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> but listen, even in the rural area, oh. but in your little community, we isolate ourselves, mm -hmm. right? You know, mm -hmm. I know the Holy Spirit speaking to me. You got to be a friend to everybody in this community mm -hmm. that you live in, right? Mm -hmm. Know my neighbor. I know the sign he put in the yard, who you gonna vote for, right? Mm -hmm. I understand that, right? <laughs> but you know what? This guy is one of the, the person you want in your neighborhood because he sees everything, mm. right? Now I was in the field yesterday getting the green. I saw my phone say, you know, someone at the front door. I figured that's UPS, something else turning around and then Yesterday evening, I was moving my garbage receptor, putting it back to the house. He said, somebody will walk around your house here today. Wow. And I said, yes. And uh, so I said, well, the guy who was fixing the Christmas bulbs on the, on the house, right? He said, okay. And uh, cause I was looking at my garbage. He said, what you know? I said, I'm looking to see how I put in a lot, some money in here. And we chuckle, we laugh. Mm -hmm. But, but you see what I'm saying? I know his political view, mm -hmm. but the most powerful view is Christ's that's view. Right. And that's, that's one right. I got to give. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And that, yeah. that means he's not still he, a loving person. That's what I'm talking because about. Because we have different political that's views. That's what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. We let the minor things separate us and again, yes. block our ability to witness to others. Mm -hmm. We even do that with our sports yeah. team, some people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm not looking at one beautiful lady here who well, on her man. team. Well, if you're not following LeBron, you're not following nobody. 
<laughs> I mean, you know, we, it, it, again, if we practice, because remember he took him on the on, uh, on a field trip in the, in the practices in the field. If we start practicing on those little things, that it doesn't matter, you know, if we different you know, on sports things, I mean, whatever it might be, we still can come together and, and love each other mm-hmm. and be good with one another. Mm-hmm. Because I, I heard a long time, my grandma told me, you don't ever, what is, in mixed company, you never talk about religion and, and the Bible because it gets so, the conversations get so heated and become a debate. But I'm thinking, shouldn't that be exactly where I'm talking about? You know, how, and the reason is because we don't, we're not doing it lovingly. Mm-hmm. We're not doing it. You letting the Holy Spirit yeah. lead and guide the conversation. You know, you're not doing it with an open mind and an open heart. Absolutely, you've already decided what you believe, and your thing is to there convince that other person. Not not have an open heart and open. And while mind. they're talking yeah. about the Word of God in an open meeting. You and I can be praying that the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit would be the master teacher in that meeting. Yeah. That sounds, right? That's mm-hmm. good. You know, and just leave it there. That's good. But then that's the Holy Spirit because when we're sitting there, that's something what we call wounded soldier. Mm-hmm. Now let the Holy Spirit show you who's wounded. Now you go individually and talk to that person. Mm-hmm. See? Mm-hmm. But we're in program. Don't talk about it in a... I mean, I, I really, and I, I don't know that I do that now. I'm thinking about that. Yeah, when people start those conversations in like a, yeah. a boardroom or, you know, yeah. or something like that or, you know, different organizations, I fall back. I really do. And, you know, but this lesson I told you, yeah. I was so convicted. Yeah. So, um, so seeking the multitudes, despite challenges, um, external and internal, Jesus graciously extends the call to us for his mission to the cities. And I just read that, that, you know, regardless of, of what might be going on, what the challenges might be, may be happening, he's calling us to that. And you know what, actually, you know, when we think about the mission field, and surely he's called, calling us outside of our comfort zone. Mm-hmm. But I think Elder Bryant mentioned, or you might have, Alice, that what about in our families? Well, you know, th- there are people who are unsaved in our own families. True. You know, there's that group of family members that you just, those are not the ones you go around. Mm-hmm. And you know, if, they, if you invite them to be in the mix, everybody know about them, everybody kind of cautious because you know they're going to be here. They're going to be here. You know that group. But what about witnessing to them like right did God am I in that family in that space for such a time as this you know like is this this could be the very reason I was birthed into this family to witness to this group of people in my family we got so many biases that we deal with that oh we need gosh. to get rid of. We need to be in constant prayer. And, you know, and yes, this is That's a good. lesson that makes you look at all those Whew, Look at yourself. Things. Look at <laughs> yeah. yourself. Yes, yes. Yeah. See, this lesson, this quarter really summed up, you need to do something. There you go. The bottom line, that's what let's talk about. We've had meetings. That's good. We've had yeah. meetings. We've had meetings. You need to do something. Mm. And that do something is reaching those people unreachable. Right around in Jerusalem here. He said, start right here. Don't go out. Start here first. Then Samaria. Then Judea. Go out into the world. But right now, you, you, right you work here. this thing right around in Jerusalem here. That's good. You know, then it gets smaller right in your home. Then it gets smaller right in your church, right in your community. Mm. That's good. And I think what you said, Elder Brian, is that, yeah, this lesson is a call to action, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. Like, no excuses. No excuses. Yeah. Because we have to do something. We're called to do something. And, and you know, and, and so I wanted, that's a good segue to, I would love for someone to read Matthew 9, 35 through 38, because it, that could be burdensome, right? That call to, even in our own homes and in our church, in our community, it, it could be a lot, right? Because it's a lot to do. There, there's a lot of brokenness. There's a lot of um, woundedness. People are, are suffering. There's a, not, a lot of crime, hate, vow. I mean, like, all, it runs the gamut. But what does the Lord say about that? What does he say when it, the, it's just too, the, the, the burden itself, the, the labor is just too much and too overwhelming? Matthew, Matthew 9, 35 through 38. Okay. This one, 35. 35 said, Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages in Galilee, 
teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news, which is the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. His words and his work reflecting his messiahship. When he saw the crowd, he was moved with compassion and pity for them because they were uh, dispirit and distressed mm. like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is indeed plentiful, mm -hmm. but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into <coughs> His harvest. Isn't that something? Oh that, so, mm -hmm. so we got to pray. Lord, send some 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 workers. <laughs> That's right. To go out and do some harvest. There you go. Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't that the answer? Yes. <laughs> He's not calling us to go alone. But what I'm doing, I'm complaining that there are no workers. I'm not even praying. Mm -hmm. And He say, you need to pray. I mean, to send some workers to go out in the harvest. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you know, for, for, for so long, I only heard, and I, and I know it's on me. I know it's on me. Don't judge uh -uh. me. <laughs> I just caught it. Only 37. I just caught it. I right. just caught it myself. Go ahead. I, I missed that. I missed the prayer part. There you go. I missed the prayer part. I got so for caught years up. years I did. And... The labors are few. The harvest is plentiful. Mm -hmm. I missed it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. But God. But God. But God. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I, I, I it was like, like an all, all kind of moment mm -hmm. when I got that. Like, mm -hmm. what in the world? That, that is the, that's the huge, that's it. That's the answer. Because I, that was a crutch for so many years. Well, you know. Is, the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. We can't do all of that and stop it right there. Cut it off right there. And but but he right after that he said, therefore, pray, but pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest. This is all mine anyway. You aren't harvesting anybody. These are my people, and I'm doing the harvesting. Mm -hmm. We aren't saving anybody. No. He's doing that. He's doing the heavy lifting anyway. And then he said, not only am I going to do the heavy lifting, just ask me for some more laborers that I got you. But, man, I'm telling you, that was just a, a hallelujah yeah, moment yeah, for that's me when he unpacked that. that. And you don't need no money because I already gave you the money. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that real? It is real. It is real because I never really concentrated on that part either mm -hmm. to pray and ask. Mm hmm Yeah. To pray and ask for more workers. Isn't that something? Yeah. I'm telling I, you, I I'm resting better we, these yeah, days. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what we've probably we all missed that. done. We missed that. Yeah, he never called us to do this by ourselves. Wow. And he knows that it's a lie. He knows that witnessing, look at what it took for us, saints of God. And, and imagine, and he knows what it's going to take for to bring all of his children into the fold. To even even, even the, the step before that, just the witness part, he knows all about it. And he's saying, I got you. They're laborers that I have ready for you. It's almost like, you need an assistant? I got you. Just ask me for it, right? <laughs> At work, we have to put yeah. in a requisition for that or go to the board. I was talking to our finance manager and said, hey, can we afford to hire, you know, this additional staff because we need another staff to do a thing, right? I'm looking for that resource. I'm asking, do we have the money? Jesus has said, just ask me. Just ask him. Just ask me. The source of everything. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, it just, it blows my mind how great God is. How, he, he, he not only tell, ask us to do a thing, but like Elder Bryant said, we don't need the, any money to do it. And if we do, he got it. Mm -hmm. We don't need to do anything but follow him and let the Holy Spirit be our God. Mm -hmm. Pray and ask him for help. Mm -hmm. Because we go out and try to get our own help. We messing it up. <laughs> we, we already messed the plan up. The program is derailed at, at Jump Street, as they used to say, as soon as we get involved. He said, pray and ask me for the help. That yeah. just, that's a blessing. That's just a blessing. 
I'm sorry, Alice. I know I, I took a long time on that. I just oh, I was so that's excited. Good. To get that that's part. good information. Good information. Um, so and good a lesson. <laughs> I mean, right? We can do this. That's essentially we can do this mm -hmm. Be because he's going to send the help that we yeah, need. He's equipped us. We just got to have I courage. Love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. He's equipped us. Absolutely. There are two microphones down here. If anyone would like those, um, please let us know. Sister Griffin, you want a microphone back there? <laughs> well, we'll get it to you if you do, brother. Brother Mike got us. Okay, all right. So, um, after the encounter with the Pharisees, Jesus withdrew to Capernaum, and and I'm sorry, I'm, I need to say where I'm. I'm a little further down on uh, on seeking the multitudes, and we, I promise we're going to move on. After the encounter with the Pharisees, Jesus withdrew from Capernaum and crossing Galilee, repaired to repaired to the hill country on the borders of Phoenicia. Looking westward, he could, not, he could see spread out upon the plain below the ancient cities of Tyre, Tyre I'm sorry, and Sidon, with their, with their heathen temples, their magnificent palaces, and marts of trade, and the harbors filled with shipping. And, and Alice, you kind of touched on this earlier, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, mm -hmm. but my question to, to me, right, in, in this was, well, what places have we set up, have I set up as a magnificent palace? You know, like a place, and, and essentially it was, they were living to their absolute means, they were wealthy, they, and they wanted people to know that, and they lived accordingly, and, and they had all the beautiful things, and it was all about them. Do we have any of those type of spaces? Are we maybe not on the same level, but in the same vein doing some of that as well right here today? Absolutely. It doesn't have to be a magnificent big palace. Some of us look at our homes mm -hmm. as these places and That's our good. material possessions and our bank accounts and our retirement plans mm -hmm. and and the vehicle we drive and we take all of these things and we idolize them and we put them before God and we worship the created things instead of worshiping the creator. Wow, that's good. That's so, I mean, we're true. just like the people in Tyre and Sidon. Yeah, that's right. And look at all these big, these buildings that are coming up. Mm -hmm. Beautiful establishments, beautiful, yeah. and no one can afford them. We get, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it, affordable housing seems to be a thing of the past. Thing of the past. Mm -hmm. Because to set up these big, magnificent palaces, if you will, to, for a developer to be able to put their name on that. It, it looked just like when you started with that stat. I'm like, I can see that in the next few years that we're, we're moving to that, that urban look. And, but we still have to go in those places. We're still called into those places and not to indulge the culture and be a, become a part of, but we have to be in there to be a witness for, for Jesus Christ. And it's difficult, it's difficult not to get caught up in the magnificentness of all of it. So let's talk a little bit about um, Tyre and Sidon. I count, what time is it? Because I really want to get to send her. <laughs> Do you have any comments on that on no, no, this no, page? No. Okay, we're going to actually, unless anyone has any comments on that particular, and that's on Tuesday. I do have quite a few. But um, I, I want us to talk about Center. And um, I th I, this is, um, let's see, this is where Peter has the dream and, and all of that. So let's go to Wednesday's lesson um, and spend some time there. In the, unre in the unreached neighborhood of the cities, there are many who long for hope. And um, we just kind of talked about that. Like when we're in these spaces, you know, we don't know who is wounded, who's looking for somebody to witness to them. Just and may not even realize it, may not even know people need to be loved and cared for. Who's looking for some hope? Today in the cities, there are many population groups with whom Jesus Christ wants his people to share the blessed hope of the second advent. And just as Jesus didn't care what their nationality or race was, neither should we. Neither should we. So let, if someone can read um, Acts 10, 9 through 16, or just some of those scriptures in there. Is, can you, is it hyperlinked on your, mm -hmm. your device? And then we'll just summarize that a bit. Okay. 
Acts 10, 9 through 16. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. Okay, now I'm going to read 28, 34, and 35. So 28 says, and then he, and he said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful, and this is after um, Peter has gotten to, to um, Cornelius' house, which is where in the vision, all of that was working out so that he would go to Cornelius' house. So at 28, he's there, and he said to them, you, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation, but God has shown me that I should come, I should not, I'm sorry, that I should not call any person common or unclean. That's what the vision was about. And then verse um, 34, verses 34 and 35. So Peter opened his mouth and said, truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. So that's for us, that's for us to know that God shows no partiality, that he, he, he is not a respect of person, right? And that's what his word says. So verse 28 reveals that, again, that the dream was referring to people and not food, because we've heard that dream uh, or that interpreted as that was relating to food and that we sh should and can eat anything. And that's not what that um, passage is, is referring to. And then the Holy Spirit is breaking down Peter's ideology or ideology that some people are common and unclean. Because he, Peter loved the Lord. He was, a, he was a believer, right? But he still held the thought that some people were common mm -hmm. or, or, and, and just unclean. And we just talked about that too so that we don't judge Peter that we just talked about that too. When we think about the LBGTQ community, when we think about um, homosexual, homosexuals that have HIV and AIDS, when we think about uh, prostitutes or people who are selling or using drugs, have we, have we, if we're honest about it, have we not labeled those people groups or some of those people groups as common and unclean? Would I bring that person or those persons into my home, have a meal with them, enjoy them, not as if I have a stranger in my house, but that I have someone, a, another loving human being who loves the Lord in my home. And those are just questions and things that we have to wrestle with because it's easy for us to look at the fact that, wow, Peter actually thought of somebody as uncommon or, or unclean. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Jews did in, in, mm -hmm. in totality thought mm -hmm. that, which is what Jesus was working to undo that mentality and that thought process. Um, any, any thoughts on that? Any further thoughts on that? Well, no, just because, you know, like we said earlier, you grow up in a certain culture. You grow up uh, believing certain things you've heard from the time you were a child. Mm -hmm. And so you have those prejudices built in, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't even realize you have them. That's a good point. You don't even realize you have them. But, you know, you come in contact with someone of a certain race, or you come into contact uh, certain proclivity to a certain sin and you you automatically make judgment calls on on people that's right that's uh, right. and so you know we, God's got to change our hearts we have to pray that God changes our hearts because he doesn't wish that anyone is lost he wants everybody to be saved and the gospel is for everybody it's not just for a certain group of people or a certain um, religious denomination or uh, certain um, nation of people. That's right. He wants Good. everybody to be safe. Absolutely. And the thing is, is that the biggest thing I want to end with this part and to say, God, we group people and categorize people. God is not doing that. That's, a, that's on us. That's We're us. doing that. God mm -hmm. loves everybody, as should we. 
regardless, everybody. Um, God used, um, and, and back to Peter's vision, God used um, these visions to confront Peter's religious pride and bigotry against the Gentiles. It's a comment. Oh, comment. Yes, yes. It's a, a microphone right behind you. Oh, I just want oh, thank you, sir. I just want to say with the statement that you just say, the word of God say, all have sinned and come short mm -hmm. of his glory. Amen. He didn't say a particular race. He didn't say a particular denomination. He say all, and all is including all. Amen. Have Amen. And Amen. come short. We don't know how short that short is, <laughs> but he say all have come short. I love it. That's right. And all he includes made a way me and you. For us to come in. Yes, absolutely. Amen. It includes all of us mm -hmm. in it. So thank you so much for that comment. Thank you. Um, we're and and I'm, I know time really really flies, um, but we're we're going to um, if this Alice will give us prayer. We're going to transition to our um, divine worship. In between now and divine worship, we'll um, have some praise and worship music going and just greet one another during these few minutes of transition. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for allowing us to meet here and study your word. Help us, God, that we take this and we go out and apply it to our lives, that we pray for the Holy Spirit to change us, that we not be judgmental, that we um, not have biases, that you will work on our hearts, and God, that you would lead us out to witness to those that, that, that need compassion and love. And we just pray for our service that's coming up uh, yes. at the 11 o'clock hour. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you all so very much. So remember, as you're enjoying the praise and worship music, greet one another, please.
and that you are here and ready to praise the Lord. So our call to worship this morning is Psalm 103, verses 4 and 5. Enter, I'm sorry, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us pray. Father, we bless your name and we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. And oh God, we thank you that your love and your mercy endures through all generations. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here and we thank you right now, Lord, for what you're going to do through this service today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Sabbath this morning to you. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? If you don't mind, can you stand to your feet as we sing this song of praise today? Help me sing this today. Oh, praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus, bless His sake. Ephesus Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, those of you that are worshiping here in the sanctuary, we say welcome. Those of you that are watching by way of social media with through YouTube, we say welcome to you. And we let us acknowledge, maybe we have some visitors that are worshiping with us here today. Is there any visitors in the house today? If you would please stand. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. You want to just say your names? Are there any 
anything else you might want to add? <laughs> amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. If you just remain standing, we've got a couple other ones. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. Thank you. I uh, have a lady in the back. Abundantly, yes. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and gentlemen, gentlemen in the back. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you to all our visitors. Please feel welcome. We love having you with us today. Uh, and we surely, surely hope you will come again, that this won't be your last time visiting us. Uh, in the uh, absence of our pastor today, Pastor Leon Bryant Sr., you are so welcome. And um, thank you. And uh, like I said, please, please feel free to come again. All right. So just uh, some quick notes here. Um, first of all, I um, do want to also acknowledge and welcome you on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Leon Bryant. Um, um, he really wishes that he could be here with us today, but he'll be back on next week. As many of you know, he's traveling to get um, his um, belongings and come and, and, and join us full time permanently. So we're excited about that. Um, also, there are collards. Um, collard greens, like big collard greens in the back. So for everyone that is here, please um, meet us in the back. Um, and, and we want to, you know, bless each person, each household with some collard greens. We don't want any to be left here at the church. So please join us in the back to get your collard greens, okay? All right, and also just to seed your mind after, um, <clears throat> we're gonna do it just a little different after, um, the children's spotlight, we're gonna have a short testimony time. And I want you to be thinking about it while the praise team is blessing us. I, we're, we, I just want you to think about, just kind of go over this year, right? We're almost at the end of the year, we made it, right? We're still here, praise God. Um, I want us to think about some but God moments, like something happened, something was going on, but God did it. But God brought me through, but God sustained me, but God has kept me. This morning we were blessed, we were sitting at the table ready, preparing for Sabbath school, and our dear sister Lily Jane Robinson walked down the aisle, and, and all of her joy 
joy and she said, you know what? I just want to say something. And you know her voice projects and she said, I just want to say something. And she shared, simply share that I'm just glad we're all here together. I miss you all. I'm glad we're all here together. I don't know about you, but that's a but God moment because everybody who started out here at the beginning of the year is not still here today. So the fact that we're here, it is because of God, but God interceded, but he intervened on our behalf. So thank God for that. So I want to hear that from you. We're, and then we're going to transition and we're going to talk about that in scripture, um, a few um, situations in scripture during our sermon. But we want to hear from each other, right? We overcome by the, what? How do we overcome? By the testimonies of the saints. That's right. So we want to hear from one another and be encouraged today. Okay. All righty. Let's be blessed. Praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody feel like praising him this morning? Don't we serve a good God here? Come on, put your hands together like this morning. Come on. Praising, praising Him. Oh, I feel like praising, praising Him. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him all day long. I feel like praising, praising Him. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. I feel like praising, praising Him. Oh, I feel like praising, praising Him. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him all day long. I feel like praising, praising Him. Verse this. Come on, everybody, while you got a chance. Come on, everybody, while you have a chance. Praise them in the morning. Praise them all day long. I feel like praising, praising him. Yeah. Come on, everybody, while you have a chance. Oh, come on, everybody, while you have a chance. Praise him in the morning, praise him all day long. I feel like praising, praising him. Yeah, I feel like praising, praising him. Well, I feel like praising, praising him. Praise him all day long. I feel like praising, praising him. One more verse. Come on, everybody, while you have a chance. Oh, come on, everybody, while you have a chance. Praise him in the morning. Praise him all day long. I feel like praising, praising To receive glory and honor and power. The message for today's story is we praise Jesus for doing hard things for us. Have you ever had to do something really hard? Jesus did something really hard for you. After sharing supper, Jesus and the disciples walked to a garden. Pray for me, Jesus said to his friends. 
Then he went a little ways away to pray. He knew he would die very soon. Father, he prayed, I don't want to suffer, but if it is your will, I will do it. God sent an angel to encourage Jesus with words of comfort and hope. When Jesus went back to his friends, he found them sleeping just when Jesus needed them most. There, in the middle of the night, Jewish leaders came with soldiers to arrest Jesus and to take him to the high priest. Peter followed. He slipped into the yard and sat near the fire the guards had built. A servant girl saw him. That is one of Jesus' followers, she said, pointing to him. Peter was afraid. I don't even know Jesus, he exclaimed. Soon a man stared at Peter. You must be one of Jesus' special friends, he commented. I am not, Peter insisted. A little bit later, another man studied Peter's face. This must be one of Jesus' disciples, he said. I don't know what you're talking about, Peter shouted. Jesus heard. He looked at Peter with eyes filled with sadness. Peter felt terrible. He was so ashamed. He hurried away, crying bitterly. The guards put a blindfold on Jesus. One hit him as the other shouted, You are a prophet. Tell us who hit you. The Jewish leaders gathered together. Are you the Messiah? they asked Jesus. Jesus answered them, I will soon be sitting at God's right hand. The leaders' faces turned red with anger. They wanted Jesus to die right then. They thought that should happen to someone who called himself God. But Jewish leaders had to get permission first from the Roman ruler, Pilate. The leaders led Jesus to Pilate's palace. Pilate did not believe the lies they told about Jesus, but he was afraid of the Jewish leaders. Finally, Pilate agreed to do what they wanted. Take him away, he ordered. Soldiers dressed Jesus in a purple robe. They made a crown of sharp thorns and placed it on his head. They knelt down and pretended to honor Jesus, and then they spit on him. But Jesus did not fight back. His heart was breaking, but he was not angry at the leaders or the soldiers. He forgave them because he loved them. Jesus would die for the people who hurt him. Jesus would die for you and for me. This podcast is produced by gracelink.net at Studio El Piso, Singapore. For more children's resources, please visit gracelink.net. Music just made a very valid point, so I'm going to call him out on it. But it was a really good point. He said, isn't it something that the church people killed Jesus? And isn't that something? It wasn't those on the outside. That's the tr- right, right? That is the truth. Isn't that something? So just, just ruminate on that because we're talking about the, un- the unreachable and the mission field. I think the mission field is right here in the house. What do you think? I think it's some work to do right here. So um, thank you, Minister of Music, for that. So I want to also, before, right before we do our um, tithe and offering, um, the, and, and Brother Tyree is going to pray for, um, do a special prayer for this family during prayer time. But the Moore family, as you see, um, Brother David Moore is, is home. He's not a visitor, but I'm so glad he stood up so that you all could, could see him. Um, but, you know, their family suffered great loss this week, too. Um, Two members of their family passed away this week. Um, Kat Lee, I know you got, might know her, her husband, um, passed away. Was it Wednesday? Wednesday, and also her brother Doobie, which most of you all know him, um, passed away on Wednesday as well. Um, so please keep the family in prayer. They're still working out all of the arrangements. Wednesday is... Uh, 
is Brother Lee's fam um, funeral at New Beginning. Did I say it right? At, at, at 12 o'clock on, on Wednesday. So um, please keep the family in prayer. That's unimaginable grief. Um, so, um, okay, so as we um, just focus on giving, returning our tithe, and I've said this before, is that, for, and, and, we, and we know this, we are, we are only able to return a tithe because God has given to us first. And we're not giving him anything that is ours. We're not paying him back. We're not. We're simply returning what is his anyway. And 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 we know because we have experienced it. We're living it. That God will do more with that ninety percent than would ever happen with a hundred percent. And we're a living witness of that. And you all know I love this song. We cannot. You cannot. I cannot beat God's giving. The more we give, the more He gives to us. And we 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 are living that. And I'm sure. You have mountains of testimonies about that. So I simply just encourage us and invite us to worship right now through our returning of our tithe and offering. Would the deacons please come forward? Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for giving to us. We thank you and we praise you for caring for us. And then, Lord, we are returning what you have given to us, but then you bless us even the more just for doing what you have asked us to do. And we just thank you and we praise you. Lord, we pray for those who are giving that you will bless them ten and a hundredfold, Lord. And then we pray the same blessings over those who desire to give but don't have it in, the, in this moment. Lord, we pray that you change their circumstances. Now, Father, we pray that everything that is received will be used to further your work here on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. some good days 
I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I look around and begin to think, think things over, all of my good days, I'll wait my bad days, and I, I won't complain. Sometimes my clouds hang low, I can hardly see, see the road, I messed up, question Lord, why so much pain, but he knows what's best for me. My weary eyes, they cannot see, so I just say, thank you, Lord, and I, I won't complain, cause God has been good to me. this whole world and you could have ever be he's been good to me he drives all of my tears away turn my midnight sin today so I just say Thank you. We give you praise today for you being an awesome God and being the God that's over our lives. God, we thank you, God, for, for your grace and your mercy, God. We thank you, Lord, for just being a great God. God, I ask you, Lord, to just touch the more family, God, as they go through their time of bereavement. God, I ask you, Lord, to give them strength, God. God, be with them, God. You say you never leave us or forsake us, God. And God, we know that you're not a God that will lie. So, God, we thank you, God, for standing on your word, God. I ask you, Lord, to bless every person that's here today that's going through a situation, God. God, we know that your hands are big, even though our hands are small. So, God, we know that you can solve our problems. God, we thank you, Lord, for just being an awesome God. God, I ask you, Lord, to this touch the speaker today. Touch Elder Tracy as she preaches the word today, God. Give her strength. Give her clarity today, God. God, ask you, God, to fill her up with your anointing, God, that her cup would run over on and pour out on us today, God. God, we thank you for this being a great God, and, and God, we just say we love you today, and we thank you, God. We celebrate you, God, because you are our God. You are our creator. You are everything to us, God. Ask you, God, to heal and set free and deliver on today, God. Heal the sick and shut in, God. God, we know that you are a healer, God. You said by your stripes that we are healed, God, and we believe every word that you have said, God, and it's in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you thanks, and we give you praise. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody need the Lord in here this morning? I know we all need him here today. Just lift your hands if you need God this morning. I dare you to say something and I say, God, I need you this morning. I reach my hands up to you to tell you I need you. Worship at your 
Lift your hands and sing with me today and say, I need you, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. Anybody need him this morning? Come on, help me sing. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. I lift my hands and bow. I know him to be a healer here this morning. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. We lift our hands and bow our knees to worship at your throne. Yeah, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Good deal. Okay, so as I promised, we're going to, we want to hear from one another just for a little bit. We want to talk, just have you thought about your testimony? I know you didn't have to think long about it. So I have a, a microphone. Um, Brother Tyree, will you help me with the microphone for just a moment? So Brother Tyree is ready to bring the microphone to you to share your testimony. Now, I know that we are going to sit in this house and act like God had done something for us today. That's a shame. I'm just going to put it out there because we're only here because he has allowed us to be here. He has given us strength. He has given us a provision so that we can be here. And we, you mean to tell me we'll have a word to say what God, but, a but God moment that we can share with one another this morning? I'll, oh, okay. I was going to say I'll start if I just need to warm up everybody. I just want to thank the good Lord for the angels that, in, that helps us out, the Holy Word, the Bible that teaches us how to pray and, and teaches us how to do things that's right in the, light, in, the, in the light of the Lord. I just want to thank Lord for everything. I'm kind of nervous now. I can't say what I want to say, but I just want to thank say you thank time. you, Lord, that I'm here today. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I have a lot of troubles, a lot of heartaches, and a lot of this and that, but I'm still, mm. I'm still praising the good Lord, yes. and I say thank you, Lord, for yes. everything you do for me. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. amen. Amen, amen. Sister Smith in the back, and then this young lady right here. Brother Mike, can you help him with the mic, please? Thank you. I am surely got a testimony. Uh, on the way down here, I tried to move and everything in the process of moving. I just was coming up with all kinds of problems trying to get home. And there's a song that here comes Jesus. Mm. So I want to say that before I say, but I want to say, but here come Jesus. Amen. I was having a problem financially trying to get home and Seemed like the, the devil was just trying to keep me from going, but I knew God had tell him, was telling me to go home. So in the process of doing that, I didn't think I had anything, and I had to use everything I had to get home, but mm. here come Jesus. All right. I'm telling you, my sister stepped in, came up there, and helped me out. Then I said, financially, how am I going to get home? But here comes Jesus. All right. And there was my niece and my son working on getting me home. 
And then I was here she's having to get us another load, and here come my brother. Mm. I say, but Jesus, <laughs> here come Jesus. I love and you. God is so good. In all my life, I've never been starving. I've never been hungry. I've been hungry if I wanted to be hungry, if I wanted to fast, <laughs> but never been hungry. Amen. I'm like David, whereas I was old, young, now I'm old. Mm. I've never seen the, <laughs> I've never seen the, what is it? The righteous, the righteous forsaken or the seed begging bread. bread. And Amen. just believe me, you can take my word for it. God is always on time. That's right. It may not be when we want him, but he's right on time. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh Praise God. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is yes, good. Yes, he is. Yes, I want to give him praises from January until now. Because without God and prayer, you can't do anything. Amen. And that connection that I had with him made me more to recognize who he is. Mm. I knew of him, but I know him now. Amen. And I want to give him praise. I want to thank him for answering prayers. Mm. Yesterday, I went to see Daniela. You know her, she has the two boys. She had surgery yesterday. So I went to the hospital to see her, and she was in recovery. Mm -hmm. And in the process of that, she was not feeling well, and they was going to de uh, discharge her. And I said, uh-uh. No, she don't need to be discharged because she was weak and was weary mm -hmm. and everything, and something was going on with her. And I said, no. Her husband was there, but I said, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. She's not ready to go home. Mm -hmm. She could not um, move her bowels, not just her bowels itself, but could not urinate. So they finally admitted her into the hospital. Not into the hospital, took her up to the room. She's in the room 219. Mm -hmm. But on the process of that, not able to pee, they continued to give her the fluids. I called her this morning, about 7.30 this morning, and she said, Sister Smith, guess what? I urinated. Amen. To God be the glory. God answers prayers. Yes, he does. But I say this. We have to stand in the gap for one another. Okay? We really have to stand in the gap for one another and talk up for one another when crises come. They are especially now, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Especially now. We need one another. Don't say no. We don't need one another. We do need one another. Amen. So I want to thank God for answering prayers. We lost a lot of members, but we're still here. <laughs> we have not been put to sleep. So God has a purpose for us. Amen. Use your talent. Don't be a bench warmer. Do something for the Lord because he is coming back. Definitely. He is coming back. Tell someone about Jesus. We don't have to tell them about this, that, or the other, but give them Jesus. Mm. You know, and your lifestyle, may the life I live speak for me. Amen. May the life you live speak for you, brothers and sisters. You know, because this is the time that he is coming back. Amen. We're not supposed to be perfect. We're not all perfect. But if we know the Lord and the Holy Spirit was in, was, is in us, People could see it. People would know, huh, that person knows the Lord. I want to follow that person and know what that person knows. So I just thank God. I, I praise him for answering prayers Amen. for me. I, you just don't know. He's answered prayers for me. And I just want to give him glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, yes. Jehovah. Nisi, <laughs> thank you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sister Griffin. Good morning. I just want to thank the Lord for. <laughs> thank you. Go ahead. I have a lot to be thankful for. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to start off with last year. Starting July last year, when I had a sister, she just. She died. She passed. And then in October, I had a brother. He passed. Then I was running around so wasn't worrying about myself. But I was taking care of my sister. She was in the nursing home and everything. 
And I was running, I was feeling bad sometime, and sometime I wasn't. So, that's supposed to pass the 19th of December last year. Okay, okay, all right. So, we funeralized her and everything. Here comes January. They had to call the rescue squad for me. So they put me in the hospital. I stayed in there a week. My blood was so low to really, they had to give me iron. Okay, the, that week, after I got out of the hospital, they continued to give me iron. They said, we got to give you iron before we can do the surgery. So in February, they did surgery. A few days after that, I had an infection, so they had to go back and do surgery again. Brothers and sisters, I was so sick. I really was sick. I was so sick until really I thought I was going to die. Jesus. I didn't pray for the Lord to heave me. I asked the Lord, please don't take my life. Mm. Because if he had taken my life during that time, brothers and sisters, I'm a caregiver. I don't know what would, would have happened to the people that I take care of. And that's why I asked the Lord to please don't take my life. I never prayed. I always pray, pray but I never prayed so hard in my life for him to save my life and keep me going telling others about him mm, Jesus. as I continue to live today. Amen. And that's my mission is to tell others Amen. about him. And when I meet people, I don't know what it is, but I was at the doctor's office on Thursday, Tuesday, whatever day it was. And this lady, she said, I know you know the Lord. So would you please pray for my family? Mm. And that's not, ha that's not the first time that have happened. I'll be sitting there tending to my business and someone else will come there and say, I know that you, love, you know the Lord. Amen. That's what I want people to see in my That's life right. That's right. as I continue to serve him each and every day. Amen. And I also want to thank the Lord for giving me a husband for 49 years. Amen. Amen. Yesterday was our anniversary. Amen. And I'm telling you, Marriage is not easy all the time. We have to learn how to forgive and forget and to say, I'm sorry. Mm. We don't have to be, we don't have to be the one that, that's causing the problem. But you know what? Say, I'm sorry anyway. Mm. And, and don't let the sun go down on your wrath. My Lord. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. I just want to thank the Lord for bringing me back to another year, protecting me and my family, and saving us from all hurt, harm, and danger. There's so much I want to say, but I'm just going to say, pray for me that God will continually use me, especially around a lot of these little kids. I'm crossing the street. Because a lot of them don't know God. They don't go to church. But I try to talk to them and get them some kind of insight of what Christ is all about. So just pray for me to give me strength to continue Amen. doing that. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I want to say happy Sabbath to everyone and happy holidays. Happy Sabbath. And I have a test, I want a testimony that the Lord woke me up this morning. That's my testimony, that he woke me up this morning and he watched me as I slumbered in my sleep last night. Mm. And when he watched me over, and when he watched how, as I slumbered in my sleep last night, I knew that he woke me up this morning Amen. because he blew, he blew his breath into my body mm. and woke me up this morning. And I wanna thank him for it. That's right. I wanna thank him for today because to me, Every day is a brand new day. That's right. That's Every day right. is a brand new day that we will never see again. That's so right. I just want to thank them. Yes, yes. That's all I had to say today. Amen, amen. I just want to thank the Lord this morning for his goodness and his mercy towards me. Satan was on my tracks this morning. Mm. I prayed to the Lord to help me, Lord, to get here. Mm. because I always want to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. I've been struggling with something. I've shared it with people for over three years or more now. And, but I'd rather go to Dr. Jesus. And I have been to doctors, don't get me wrong now, but I don't trust anybody but God. Yes. And yes. every time I go through a crisis with it or whatever, I get on my knees and I pray and God answers my prayer and he gives me peace and calm. Yes. And I just want to let the church know that I am so thankful mm. that we have a God up there that cares about us. Yes. He cares. Yes. And even when I go in the store, sometimes I don't even feel like being there to shop. Mm. I don't. But I intentionally be pleasant to people. And sometimes people come up to me and just talk. I intentionally do that because even sometimes I feel so terrible, mm. but I know God has given me the strength yes. to be able to get up, to get out of my bed, to get in, put my clothes on, mm. and sometimes that's a struggle, to get in that car and drive myself where I need to go, and he and I are going together. And I'm, I just want to let people know that we serve a real God, yes. and I'm so thankful. Yes, amen. 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 I just want to thank the Lord for all he has done for me because from last year, it started with um, the lupus, when I had lupus. And it wasn't too bad then, but as um, time go by, it get worse. And then um, this year, the beginning of this year, I had the shingles. So I went through so much, but I never gave up. I just kept praying to God. And now I still hurt some. My hands hurt all the time and all. But um, I get up and I pray and all that and I go out. Me and my sister go out about every morning <laughs> and come back in and do stuff like that. But I try not to sit around because I don't want to stop going. Because once you stop, you'll be there. So I'm doing fine now and I just thank everybody for their prayers Amen. and my children for sticking by me while I was ill and my husband. Amen. Amen. Right here. I just okay. also want to add to the praise that's being given, the praises of God. Amen. I have been calling this year uh, 2023 the year of surgery for the Tomlins. Mm. Seemed like we couldn't do anything over there but get cut. <laughs> mm. We started the year with in January with my knee surgery. And with the surgery, of course, you know, like everybody else on Facebook, I joined a group, the knee surgery group. Mm. And those people were really leading me here and there. And so often, even though I continue to read within the group, so often I would get depressed because everybody mm. was making all this superior progress and I just didn't feel like I was. And the dream of the surgery for me was not coming through, not at the rate that I thought it would come. But nonetheless, I kept putting on the happy face, you all know the happy face, and going forward. I guess by, and during that time, 
I knew that there was something else going on with my leg. Mm -hmm. But doctors had been telling me for 10 years that there was nothing else. My daughter, who is not a physician, but she is a skin care specialist with many other little things that she does, she had said to me 10 years ago, Mama, you have lymphedema. And so we looked it up. And every time I would tell a doctor about the lymphedema, they would say, well, no. Who told you that, your daughter? Mm -hmm. So with, in the process of not healing well with the, the surgery that I had, I came to church and didn't even share with my church family, who could have been praying for me, that I developed a blood clot during the time in my leg. So I was taking the blood clot medication and, you know, I'm praying all along. Mm -hmm. Finally, one day in rehab uh, for the physical therapy, I said to the therapist, you know, my daughter says I have lymphedema and I wonder if that's why some of this swelling just won't go away. And she said, oh, honey, I think so too. Wow. What? <laughs> so she then asked, told me that the process would then be to go back to the surgeon, talk to the surgeon, and he could then lead me. Now all these years, 10 years of my primary and everybody else, go back to the surgeon about lymphedema? Well, I did. And guess what? I have lymphedema. Wow. So more therapy. So from March until the end of October, I have been in some type of therapy for this one right leg. Mm. And so my prayer has been, God, you, <laughs> I know you're saving this leg. And I laughed this morning when I got out of the car here because I went, where's your cane? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I walked right out. <laughs> This morning, <laughs> God. because some days I'm so swollen, mm -hmm. not because of the surgery that I thought, but because of the lymphedema, that walking is difficult. So I carry that cane for, it's a crutch. It's a crutch, you know, it's a just-in-case thing. But this, I parked back here, and I, I'm walking, and I went, girl, where's your cane? <laughs> I almost went back and got my husband's, but I didn't. Because I said, well, Lord, if you're going to let me walk on in here upright, I'm going to do it. That's right. So, That's I right. mean, <laughs> even though I thought my healing was slow, it was so God was showing me now is the time for us to fix this lymphedema. Mm. Because by waiting, now they have things that they can do for you. There is therapy. There are, I now have the pump the sleeves that I just relax with on my legs for an hour at night to take the swelling away. God is so good and he yes, provides that we yes. just have to wait yes. and That's be right. patient. But of course in the process of all this, in March, when the therapy started for me, my husband started acting like he was so weak he couldn't walk. And I was like, come on now, you, why are you acting like this? <laughs> Only to find out that he went to the doctor one morning and they wouldn't let him go home. They said, you have to go to the hospital because your, your, blood, your heart rate is running between 35 and 37. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Who does that and lives? So they sent him to the hospital. I couldn't drive yet. So a friend came and took me to the hospital to be with him. That day he ends up with a pacemaker by the end of the day. And everything was supposed to be okay, but it wasn't okay. Months, a couple of months went by and he was feeling no better. We kept going back to the doctors. They said, we think you need a stent. So we go to the hospital in August to get a stent. The doctor walks out after, I think, placing the stent and says to me, a stent is, what, is not what your husband needs today. And he looks at me and I say, oh, so what does he need? And he said, he needs open heart surgery. Hmm. And he continued to talk, you know, as though he had said good morning to you. He says he needs open heart surgery and someone will call you within the week and you'll get that done. He'll be all right. And I'm thinking, what is going on the year of surgeries? I mean, hmm. really, of course, you all know how good God yes, is yes. because hmm. on September 14th, 
they opened my husband's chest. You know, I told the doctor how to do it. You know, I told him to go in from the side <laughs> because my, my other name is Dr. Google. And, and they said, no, ma'am, that won't work. <laughs> so they opened his chest. They went in. He had a triple bypass. And if it weren't for the gout, he'd be sitting in here with me this morning. God is so, yes, so yes, yes, good. Yes. Mm. I can't praise him enough. Yes. I can't tell it enough. Look at how God was able to make it so that my daughter could come and be with us for more than a month for her mm -hmm. daddy and for me. Because Lord, it's something being a caregiver, yes. especially to a gentleman. <laughs> but through it all, I had to go there. Through it all, God is good. Yes, He is. And I like to say, God is better than good. Mm. He's better than good. And I just praise Him. Yes. I want you all to know that I love every one of you so, so much. It is so hard for me to stay home. My daughter texted me last night, and I sat here just now and realized, oh, I didn't obey. But she texted me last night and said, I heard there's an outbreak of COVID in Wilmington. Wear your mask, because I know you're going to church tomorrow. And I said, I will. And when I saw your mask, I said, oh Lord, I didn't wear my mask. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. I'm going to go out there and get one so I can tell I had one on. But I know that God is going to take care of all of yes, us. Yes. Everything that we're dealing with, everything that we're going through, he knew before that we would go through it. He gave us an opportunity to either praise him or ditch him. And I'm so glad that we're in the house wow. today to just praise him. Thank yes, you, thank you, Yes, yes, amen, amen, amen. I think we have one, yes, when one I more. When I think of the goodness of Jesus yes. and all that he's done for me and you, oh, my soul cries out, hallelujah. And I thank God for saving me. Mother, I thank God for saving me. Yes, yes. I thank God for saving you. Yes. Oh, when my heart cries out, hallelujah, oh Lord. I thank God for saving me. Yes. won't complain. <laughs> Made me cry. Where did he go, Tyree? Right here. I think on these 40 some years I have done some complaining to my father. I heard my mother's and different ones say about being a caregiver and being a witness and the greatest witness we have, I was reading it this morning, the world will know we belong to him, how we love one another. Amen. That's Amen. what the word say. That's I didn't right. Say that. That's right. Jesus said that. And so this morning, I don't know a lot of y'all. I've been here a few times before. Y'all uh, utilized my brother here, my my family. Some of my family members used to go here. But I tell you this, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to think about it. I know I love you mm. because I have Jesus on the Amen. inside. Amen. Amen. Good morning. This morning, I want to thank all my mothers and those that gave awesome testimonies. Especially you, because I was a caregiver for my husband for over six for over six years. I got such a big mouth. For <laughs> over six years, and I know about that, and I praise him for his goodness and his kindness. And it was a time, and he do teach you in those hard places. When we're in good places, mm. we don't do a lot of praying and praising. All right, all we are right. praising, but we don't do a lot of praying. Mm. We don't, don't do a lot of seeking his face. Not when we're in the good times. We're just Jesus. thanking him for what he's doing. But in them times that we don't understand, mm. and in them times you're saying, why God? That song said, I won't complete. We ain't saying, why me? Why mm. so much pain? Yes. Jesus. I thank him. I'm going to hold it. I thank him. I thank him for that because this morning I can truly say, when you read that Psalm 103 this morning, it blessed my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. 
bless his holy name. Yes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, yes. and forget not. And that's what we're hearing about this morning. All his benefits. Yes. The good ones, the bad ones, the strong ones, the weak ones. Because nothing but nothing but nothing can come into a saint's mm. life except God either bring it in or he allow it to come. My Lord. And that's what we have to remember. And I have to remind myself of that all the time. I love him this morning and I know he loves me. Mm. But God allows hard times in my life. Jesus. He brings hard times in your life. Why? Because he wants us to grow in him. Mm. We Hallelujah. praise in the good times, in the hard times. We seek his face, we seek his word, and mm. we pray. And you were talking about our husbands. And, oh, yes, say, <laughs> man, over 50 some odd years. But I think the greatest time of my life was taking care of me. It was hard, but my God. Mm. No about being that caregiver too, mother. God is good. But the Psalms, the Psalms go on to say, who heals all our diseases. Yes who forgives all our iniquities and who heals all our diseases. He redeems your life from destruction, yes. who crowns you with loving kindness yes, and yes. tender mercies. But I love this one too. I pray it just about every night. Thank you, Lord, for he has not dealt with us according to our sins. Mm, thank you, but Lord. But according to his mercies mm. and his loving kindness and his long suffering towards us. Yes, yes. Wouldn't one of us be here today if God had not suffered long with us? That's Still right. suffering with us. That's right. But as one of the mothers said, he's on his way back. Mm. He's on his way back. Yes, yes. And we're going to have to stand before him one day. That's right. And when I stand before him, they ain't going to say, Pat, Sister Ross, why Pat and uh, it ain't about Pat? Because Pat going to have her time too. That's right. Sandra going to have her time. That's right. So my prayer today is for each and every one of us is that we get into this more, we mm. do it more, we read it more, yes. we do it more, we read it more, yes. we do it more, <laughs> and we live for him. Talk is cheap. Yes. I'm a good talker, but talk is cheap. It's your I everyday life. It. It's your everyday life. I when somebody do you wrong, when you are trying to do right. Amen. When somebody don't love you and you know you love them. It's when somebody take from you. And it's when God allow those hurtful things in your life. Mm. He allow them for a reason. Yes. They saw you need to get a little closer. Mm. Come on and talk to me. Come on and praise me while you're hurting. That's right, that's right. Because when you get down on your knees and them tears start rolling, mm. and you start thanking him for his goodness and his kindness yes. and his mercy, knowing you don't deserve mm. I can truly say to every one of you this morning here, I don't deserve nothing good. But God knows in heaven I thank him for all he has done for me and you and everyone in here. Yes. I thank God for being in this church today. Yes. For loving y'all today. For here, I love that part. You, I love testimony service because I remember Amen. when I was coming up in church, our older six used to tell us, Baby, you're overcome by your testimony. That's right. Because the devil don't want you to tell of God's goodness. And guess what? When I hear somebody else testimony, brother, it encourages my heart mm -hmm. to see God brought them through it. He'll bring me through. That's right. Y'all pray right. my strength in the Lord, because I will truly pray yours, and I probably will be back another day. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all for allowing us this morning to come and fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The thanks is all ours. Thank you all for being here and fellowshipping with us this morning. I, 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 my heart is so full, so incredibly full. God is so good. Look at all those butt guys. This is something like, you know I got to say this about that cane. I told her the other week when we were at the funeral, I said, now you just be holding that cane so you can get by. You know you don't need it. <laughs> Because she picked the cane up and walked across the street just as fast as I was. God has healed her and is healing her. And you and your your smile is a testimony to how we can be still joyful even though we're going through. So I just wanted to share that. And thank you all for your, just your testimony. It's just a light. If you could see yourselves, if you were standing here, how bright your smiles are and just your light. And oh my gosh, I told you that Sister Lily Jane started that this morning. She did this. She did this coming down the aisle with that joy this morning. And it has just continued. I just want 
to go through. I want to share three um, encounters in scripture, but God. And let me tell you how good God is. He didn't give me this word until yesterday. I was, he had, I, I thought this would be for another time, the other sermon, and I was going through the notes and it just, it, and, and, and something just wasn't connecting. And I, and, I, and I simply said, I said, Lord, is this your message for your people and for me? And, and before I could finish it, I heard the whole, felt the Holy Spirit said no. No, but God, but God. That's what I've that's what he been telling me all weekend. You know I've told you all that I I'm, I'm only simply telling you, sharing with you what God has already shared with me for me. And that's what he had been telling me. It's been some difficult things going on. And, and he's been reminding me every day, you know, but Tracy, but look at what I have already done. Tracy, look at where I have brought you from. Tracy, look at what my word says about your situation. But God, and you know, but cancels everything before it. So he's saying, when I step in the situation, forget about all the other things that have happened or forget about all the other things that are going on. I have this. I got this under control. And, and so he just started ministering to me, and I just want to simply share that with you. We'll start with Matthew 19, 9, 18. This, this woman, I mean, this person who had a but God experience. So this was, and we know it, this was a, this, and this, the parable, I just want to share about the, the synagogue leader and his daughter. And then remember, this is in the same account when the woman with the issue of blood approached him. And he handled that while going on his journey to handle something else. That's the God we serve. I, we don't tie him up with our stuff. And, and because he blessing you don't mean he can't come over here and bless me. He's, 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 he's good like that and he he can take care of all our stuff simultaneously and and Matthew 9 18 says the leader of the synagogue came and knelt before him which is Jesus my daughter has just died he said but you and I put in my own words but God can you 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 he said but you can bring her back to life again if you just come and lay your hands on her and verses 23 through 24, I'm just going to paraphrase that. Jesus went to the leader's home, as we know, told the people. Now, th these are two key things that he did when he got there. He told the people, turn off that funeral music and get out. The, one of my very favorite accounts in scripture, and this is the, the Samaritan woman that Jesus encountered at the, the, the well. And I just want to bring out some highlights uh, in that um, Let's see, let's go right to the scripture here. I want to bring out just a few highlights here. So Jesus, we know that Jesus encountered this woman. He was by himself. He was, at, he was coming to get a drink. She was by herself. She had come in the heat of the day um, alone, which, which is alludes to the fact that she was socially isolated. And Jesus spoke to the fact while she might have been socially isolated. Remember Jesus told her to go and get her husband and come back. We remember that part. And in verses 17 and 18, she, he, and she said, I don't have a husband. He said, you're right. You don't have a husband. Jesus went in. I don't know about you, but he will go in sometimes. When we're open and we're vulnerable to hear it, he will go in on us and get us told, if you will. So he told her, you're right. You don't have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and you are, and you aren't even, you, I'm sorry, you aren't even married to the man you're living with right now. You certainly spoke the truth that only Jesus, right? Won't he do it? He will, he, he, I mean, you can't even question it. He, he will tell us about ourselves. And so Jesus essentially, as, he, as, as, as he's talking to her, and she hears this, and then he told her, those who drink the water I give will never thirst again, because she was focused on the, 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 the physical water that she came to get, and we would be too, right? But he wasn't talking about that. In verse 14, he said, those who drink the water I give will never thirst again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Now, I don't know, I mean, that was her but God at moment right there, this Samaritan woman. She was open to the Messiah. Remember, he's the first person, she's the first person that he revealed himself to was her. And then she went and became an evangelist for him right away. Right away, she went into the town immediately. And the results of that in verse 39 says, many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because of this woman. Now look at that. When God brought her out, 
alive, she had a purpose and a mission, and she went and fulfilled it. Her but God was that he saved her right where she was. She didn't have to go and get dressed up. Y'all don't hear me. She didn't have to go and take Bible studies. Did she? Did she have to learn all the stuff that, that, that we put people through? Did she have to look a certain way? She was, it was in the heat of the day. She was sweating and probably smelling, all kind of things. But he ministered to her right then. And then she went back and she didn't go and dress up before she went to talk to the people. She went and told them about a Jesus who saves, who knew all about her situation. She didn't complain about this man know all my business. Who around here telling about people about me? It wasn't none, it was a prophetic word and she received it, right? She did not miss her moment for God to do a thing in her life and she went then and paid that forward. That's, that's all God desires of us is allow, be open for him, pray without ceasing. In our despair, pray and ask God instead of complaining and moaning, right? Jonah prayed in his despair. When, when the man's daughter needed to be healed, he went to the one who he knew could heal her. When the, the Samaritan woman encountered the Messiah, she was open to him and he did a thing in her life. And then you can't go back, right? There's no room to complain. There's no, because we, when we look back over our lives and we see all that God has done for us, all we truly can say is hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. Bless each of one of you and let's continue to share the goodness of God and how he has turned our circumstances into testimonies. We don't have any reason to complain. Bless each of you. He has been so good to me. Better than you that so well could have ever be. He's been so good to me. He drives all of my tears away. Turn my midnight into day. So I just say thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't complain. God has been good to me. He's been good to me. Better than you in this whole world could have ever been. He's been so good. in today so I just say thank you Lord I I won't complain but God Hand clap of praise. How many of you feel so much better? Thank you, God. We want to thank Elder Ray again. We want to thank all of our visitors that worship with us today. We hope something was said that you'll want to come back. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your testimonies. And we just pray you will, will come back and visit us again. We, um, Elder Bur uh, Ray, are you going to be at the back greeting? Yes. Uh, please greet Elder Ray at the back. And our members, please greet our visitors. And let's make them feel welcome for worshiping with us today. 
I'm going to ask everyone to stand for the benediction. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but God, that's confirmation. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Sister Ray asked me to remind you, Elder Ray, the collard greens that are in the back. So everyone in here, um, back there, when we dismiss, if you want collard greens, just meet us in the back. Let us, let us pray, Lord God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a moment of silence. Also, and our ushers will lead you out. Also, Elder Ray want to know if y'all could just meet her in the back. She'll greet you in the back. Oh, she'll Where? meet you in the back. Okay.